Hey guys, welcome back to the channel Zoda of Increase. My name is Nate Denise. For those of you who are new to the channel or who just happened to stumble across this video, and I post the videos every Tuesday and Thursday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. So I'm gonna just warn you guys go get you a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, some water, a snack, because this might be a little bit of a longer video. And I can break this video up into parts, but I just want to make it one video that I can use as a reference or a resource for people when they ask me about annotating. So I'm going to talk about annotating ebooks, annotating Christian fiction, biblical fiction, annotating nonfiction, um, my system, how you can start, and things like that. That This is about to be a long video. I'm just letting you guys know. I have notes. I have your questions. So um, we just going to jump into this. And if this video is choppy, I apologize because my son is still here. Um, he's not leaving till later on. And I really did want to start this video early enough um, while my family is gone because my, my two younger brothers are out right now doing music for a recording. So it's peace and quiet. My son is here. So if it's choppy, I apologize. But I'm a mom. So let's jump into this video. So basically this video is all about annotating 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 and a lot of people don't know what annotating is so i'm going to give you what the webster's merriam dictionary says okay so to annotate is basically adding notes to a text or diagram giving explanation or comment so in simple terms is when you take a like a book or a handout and you write on it that's an annotation that's literally what it is um people make annotating seem so hard and they also make it seem so like wrong i know in the book community um here on booktube it is looked down upon if you annotate in your books which is basically writing in your books now i'm gonna explain in this first part why and when i annotate so i annotate for a few different reasons the main purpose of me annotating is for review books i review a ton of books um, i like writing reviews i work with publishers for reviews blog tours and things like that so for the purposes of me having to review books i like to annotate my books mainly um i also like to mark my favorite quotes and my favorite moments there's always a time when you grab a book or you hear someone say oh my god this is my favorite book and i liked you know this favorite quote but they can't really pinpoint where in the book the quote is because they ain't mark it down type of thing so that's why um i also like to keep track of important plot points because even though an entire story is important to the story that it makes sense but even yeah you, you guys get what i'm saying right everything in the store everything written in the book is important to the story but there are key things that um you want to focus on more those plot points i like to highlight and um annotate for um foreshadowing i like foreshadowing especially when it comes to series um trilogies series whatever when you're reading books like that book one may foreshadow to something that's going to happen in books two five or eight but you really won't know until you get to those books so anything i feel like might foreshadow to like um say you meet a mysterious person and you know this person has like blue gym shaped eyes or something like that like i don't know something random if i feel like it's foreshadowing to something that's going to happen in the future in the story i like to mark it so yeah um I like to write my thoughts and my feelings about a book in the book as I'm reading it. So like if I come across a couple that I like, I write my thoughts. If I come across um, someone saying something retarded and it hurts my feelings, I write my thoughts. If I come across a quote that I really enjoy, sorry my eye is itching, um, I write why I like it. Like I write my feelings. It's literally like I'm journaling in my books. That's what I do. Um, and then also the last thing is because I want to personalize my books. I want people to okay so when I move I envision having a library and when people come to my house I want them to not just grab a book off my shelf but when they open up a book they get to see my personal thoughts and my personal feels now there are some books I'm just like you can't read because I was a little emotional but when someone comes to my house and they want to see my personal keyword is personal library I don't want my books to be like someone else's books I want you to pick my book up and be like, this is a well-loved book. I want you to flip through the book and see my thoughts and my feelings. Let me see if I can find something. Like, on this page, I wrote something. I have sticky notes all through my book. Like, I want you to know that this is my personal book. 
um someone may have the same copy of a book but their book is not like my book because my copy is personalized to me my thoughts and my feelings so um so when i annotate i annotate when i'm reading a long series because we got a lot of information to intake of course and specifically when it's fantasies and biblical fiction biblical fiction for the purpose of edifying my spirit i want to read biblical fiction not just for enjoyment but i want to learn something out of it i want to gain something from reading biblical fiction um it's written by a christian author for the purpose of bringing the bible story to life i want to learn something from it as far as fantasies fantasies just have a lot of stuff going on so i just like to mark all that up pretty much no other reason um but yeah so um how i annotate i use a number of things and i just want to state this now the way i annotate now is completely different from how i started i started out with pencil with just annotating and putting in paper tabs i don't think i have any of my books to show you guys but I literally started out with um, literally just using pencil to annotate. And then I jumped into the five color system, then a the seven color system. And now my system has like 12 colors or something like that. So just keep that in mind. My system has evolved over the years as I've gotten used to it. And as my reading taste and my the way that I review books have changed. So just know you don't have to start like this, okay? I'm going to explain how you can start soon. But um, this is 2020 version of okay of annotating this is not like baby nay annotating at all because baby nay was using pencils and that's it so i just want to say that so um before i do that i do want to show you guys my annotating pouch um i have two little pouches makeup bags here this i got from dollar tree um this literally just keeps all of the sticky notes i'm currently using so all the ones that are currently in use and open as well as my old annotating system so again i've gone through several annotating systems okay several so you don't have to start how i am right now you can start where you feel comfortable where it's easy for you i did recently change my annotating system so that's why those are in there and then this houses all of my unused ones this is not all of them because i did take out tabs to show you guys so i have a problem we not even about it but um as far as how i annotate i annotate differently for different things so i annotate ebooks here are my ebook annotating for my nooks my nook reading on my nook i mean and then for kindle books um biblical fiction has its own annotating system christian fiction has its own annotating system my bible study booklets have its own system as well as when i'm reading nonfiction, it has its own system this works for me it's not confusing for me you don't have to do this by any means okay and you don't have to have a set color meaning a specific thing your colors can change like pink can mean one thing in one book and another thing in another book that option is up to you and how you feel um this just works for me in my brain because this is how i work that's that's all that there, there is to that um so like i said i have a color coding system we're going to talk about that um i use various types of pens markers pens pencils i have various ones we'll get into that further in a few I am going to actually start using highlighters. I don't use these right now because I don't have another set. So I'm probably going to like buy a second set specifically for the purpose of highlighting in my books. But I'm just showing you guys my zebra mount liners because I will start using these in my books soon. Okay. Um, I use sticky tabs. So I have a variety of sticky tabs. I use ones from Dollar Tree. These are the thicker ones from Dollar Tree. I have recently started cutting them in half to use as regular size ones. But these here are my babies. It comes with 500 and you get, I think, eight different colors. You get a repeat of orange and yellow, but you get eight different colors and um, phenomenal. I love these. I got my mom hooked on these. And because these are only a dollar, anytime I find them, I buy at least 10 to 15. Because most of the times when I'm finally run out and I go to Dollar Tree, I can't find them anywhere. So when I do find them, luckily I have about two Dollar Trees near me that I can go to. Literally one up the block and one like a 10 minute drive. I literally, when I find these, I buy them in bulk it's a must for me it's a necessity literally for me reading and the purpose of reading this is a necessity so these are hands down my favorite hands down my favorite because they're only a dollar just gonna get they're only a dollar dollar tree check your local dollar tree in the um school supply art section you will definitely find these these are i'm finding harder to find nowadays but these are phenomenal they're phenomenal they're excellent um they do tend to wipe off the color sometimes but it doesn't bother me 
Um, then I get a variety off of Amazon. So I have this set here. Um, it came with like one one square and one arrow in a pack, but I separated the packs. So this is literally, I think, 10 colors. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, this is 10 colors. Um, specifically, I got this for the purpose of annotating my fantasy, fantasy novels because my fantasies, I do go in depth with the various colors. So I got these for that purpose. I don't really have a preference as to whether I like the more rectangular ones or arrows. Either one works. Um, the arrows are a lot cuter, but I'm not a stickler for the shape. I really don't care. So we have those. Um, another set I got off of <laughs> Amazon. Now you guys know, you guys saw the video. I don't know what video it was. If I can find it, I'll leave it linked. Um, where I was complaining about this order because they got it wrong twice. And I didn't understand so the pack was supposed to come with 10 different colors like this but for some reason it came with five colors repeated so you're supposed to get the banners that look like this the squares or rectangles but they're supposed to be this color and then the arrows that are also supposed to be this color but whatever so it came with these different shapes um, flags rectangles arrows and then they had these actual arrow shapes these arrow shapes I specifically use for um, my nonfiction books so we'll get into that in a second okay um, the next set of sticky notes I get off of Amazon come in a pack they're about 3600 um, sticky tabs and it literally comes like this in a pack so there's like a bunch of different sizes so you have like your large ones you have the medium ones um you get these colorful ones if i can find them yeah you get like fun colorful ones like this like uh stripes dots and i think there's another one that's just like this um but yeah i tend to buy one or two at one one or two packs at a time they're not expensive i'll leave them linked down below on amazon for you but um they're not expensive at all so i get about two packs at a time and those last me which is why i have like an ex excessive amount left over but um close up this is how they used to look okay so you get the small ones which i use in my mass market paperbacks you get your rectangles and your arrows um these came with an indigo color as you guys can see they had that like indigo blue color however i've noticed that they updated and they changed that color so now it's more of it's like you have purple and then this kind of like i don't know what color it is so yeah that's a thing but um those are that so those are like the sticky tabs i use then i have post-it notes that i use because i like to write sometimes more notes than there is space for or i like to keep up with information um an example of that is in pearl in the sand um my mom has a sticky tab on it because she's currently reading it so she put book of joshua just so she knew what it was referring to but um in pearl in the sand sometimes if i like they were talking about one of the goddesses um in canaan so i wrote down information about that goddess um let me see at the end of every chapter i think i was writing a summary so i use sticky tabs to write summaries so i use sticky tabs when i want to summarize when i run to write more information than the space allots me i don't have like a specific set i just use whatever sticky tabs those are cute i have regular old sticky tabs here um sticky notes excuse me and then i have the larger ones if i need more information to write so sticky notes are great i use them not all the times um i also have these kind of paper sticky tabs that i use to like write definitions if i don't want to write the definitions in the book i use these they're literally just paper flags so we have those um and then index cards i love index cards index cards are amazing so i use index cards it doesn't matter what type of index cards these are pin and gear brand index cards um and then i have these ones here which are like grid index yeah graph rule index cards they, they look like that i just use index cards and i use index cards for the point of um 
summaries as well and an example i can show you guys this is not a christian based book it is a fantasy book so i'm showing you guys so you guys can get a feel of what i mean so with fantasy novels like this this is a brandon sanderson novel called warbreaker this is an adult, an adult high fantasy so it's a whole magical world with a magical system with its own religion with its own group of people and um societies and things like that so with these books i th they're over 600 pages mind you this book is like 670 odd pages um what i tend to do is with fantasy books I tend to like to write down the characters biblical fiction and christian fiction is not that hard to do that because it's not a lot of characters but um i tend to write down all of the character information so for this book i have three cards for character card for characters so this one talked about the different gods within the story um i wanted to keep track of those and then these are like different characters that were like important to the story because brandon sanderson his world is always like over the top then I have more cards in the back here um, that I use. I don't think I was using the sticky note system in this book. Yeah, no, not in this book. But I was using the cards. Um, and then, like, this one is, like, pages 1 to 166. So this is chapters 1 through 15. I was summarizing my thoughts. Then chapter 16 to 28, summarizing my thoughts. So with larger books, I do summarize my thoughts on index cards. Sorry if you guys hear my son because it's so much information going on i don't want to get lost especially if it's like a big world or something like that i'm showing you guys with with a fantasy because that's how i annotate it um it's really not that hard to do that with like christian related books because they're not so massive but i did want to show you guys um that and i think that's pretty much it so the pens that i use because i know someone's going to ask about the pens i'm not particular about my pens um at all so i like the sharpie art pens because they don't bleed through my pages um and because they're nice I think these are like a 0.7 or 0.8 or something like that but the sharpie art pens i like these are different from the sharpie pen so the sharpie pen looks like this the sharpie art pens look like this okay so i get these in a set off of amazon i'll leave it linked down below i think i got a 10 pack or 15 or something like that there was a pack that i had got off of amazon it'll be linked down below um i have also been using my paper mate flare pens because i'm running out of ink in the other ones and then i'm also using a stabilo pen as long as it has the color that i need i don't care personally i'm even using a a g2 a pilot g2 for the purpose of um using as like my navy blue for sh foreshadow there's no like real rhyme or reason now as far as like writing my thoughts i always use a blue ink pen because i don't want my thoughts to be confused with the text because the text in a book is always going to be black so I use a blue ink pen. This is a crown pen. This pen is just, yeah, whatever. Um, that's for my fictional books. Now, when I'm using my non-fictions or my Bible studies, I use these. So I use Sharpie highlighters, a blue pen for notes, and then my Crayola Super Tips because I like Crayola Super Tips and they're easy and I have a box of them. So, yes, that's what I use. Those are all of my tools. Um, like I said, um, oh, I didn't mention, I will start using um, highlighters soon. I want to get the Zebra Mount liner highlighters specifically for the purpose of annotating in my books. But I don't want to use these because these are specifically the ones that I use for Bible study. So I'm thinking about getting another set. Problems much? Just a little. Just a little. But um, I also want to try the Stabilo Boss highlighters. Um, they're pretty much pastel highlighters, but they're like smaller i want to try those out so hopefully that helped i'm gonna get into the breakdown of my colors in a second and then show you guys examples but um i'm gonna explain how you can start doing um your own annotation so if you are afraid to write in your books i would say start out with pencil and a post-it note pencil because it's easy to erase and it's not too dark and post-it notes because you can actually like write on it you can get normal size post-it notes you can get bigger ones or the larger ones you can even take like notepads that are small and take the papers rip the paper off the notepad write your thoughts and stick them in the book use washi tape or just you know use a um paper clip or whatever so that's how you can start if you don't want to write in your books um you can use index cards as well to keep your thoughts but again you would have to keep them in there somehow either taped or with a paper clip um or what you can do is get a notebook dedicated for 
reading so what i call it is a reading journal i don't know where my old reading journal is because i would definitely show you guys i can't find it but um i used to have this massive like eight by five eight by ten eight by eleven notebook that i used and before i really got into depth with the annotating i would literally write down important points character points um write down page numbers of like my favorite quotes and things like that in a notebook and that notebook was what I kept now I threw that notebook out a couple weeks ago because I don't care to keep it anymore because I write in my books now um but I literally started out literally just using a notebook to write everything down but then that got annoying so I was like I'm gonna write in my books because who cares so you can always use a notebook or I know a lot of people who will read books and just write notes in their phone you can do that um now if you don't mind writing in your book um, and you want to start with the color coding, I would say start out with a five color system first. And those colors would be pink, yellow, orange, green, and blue. Five colors, they're generic colors. You can literally find them anywhere in post-it tabs um, or page flags. You can find those in those five colors anywhere. So definitely start off with a five color system. And you can either um, attach each color to a specific thing or you can just change up what the colors mean per book. That is your choice, your option. But I would say if you want to start, if you want to start and you don't know where to start, five color system. If you want to start but don't want to write in your books, pencil or notebook. That's how you can start. Now, if you want more information on like in-depth, in-depth where to start, then I can do that. Just leave your questions down below. But yeah, so um, I have a lot more to talk about, which is why I'm conf I don't know where to go. So let's talk about my color coding system first before I get into the Q&A. Um, so color coding system. So when it comes to ebooks, because I know that's a question a lot of people are asking if I annotate ebooks. I do. I love ebooks. Ebooks are my life. <laughs> I have way too many ebooks. I started out being an ebook lover from the beginning. I love ebooks because I can take one small device and carry thousands of books. I haven't used my Nook in a minute, so I don't really, you know, keep up with it. But um, annotating ebooks is possible. Now, I have a Nook HD. My mom has a Kindle, but I have the Kindle app on my phone and my computer. So, um, the Nook, I don't really care for the Nook system because they only have three colors. I don't know how the Nook system is now because I got my Nook, originally the Nook HD 7-inch, when I was pregnant. So, that was about 2013 I got it from my son's father. Um, and they only had three colors, which were yellow, blue, and um, green. So yellow for me on the Nook was for like plot points or key points. Blue was for anything that was a quote that I wanted to remember. And then green was for anything that I loved. Um, that literally was like the extent of me annotating. For the Kindle, the Kindle allows you four colors. Um, so I do use a system for that. So orange is anything plot related. So anything that's essential to the story, characters, um if something dramatic happens foreshadowing everything plot wise gets marked in orange um because i like to go back to my notes for reviews um anything yellow is something funny or that makes me happy so if the character says something funny if there's something that happens to the character that that's funny to me if there's a scene that makes me happy i mark it in yellow um pink is for things that i personally love so be it a quote be it a romance, be it a specific scene, I mark it in pink because these are things that I personally like. And then blue is going to be for anything that's like sad or angry. So if you make me sad or you make me angry, things that piss me off in books get marked in blue. Um, so that's pretty much the system. All of these color coding systems will be linked down below. I'm going to have a whole black post with it because I know it can be a little confusing. So I do annotate my ebooks. It's not hard. Um, it's just a matter of you figuring out what you want your colors to mean, what's important to you. For me, when I'm reading on my phone or my um, Nook or my computer, the things that are important to me are anything plot related. So that means characters, uh, foreshadowing and things like that. Anything that makes me happy, anything that I love, memorable quotes and things that make me angry. Those are like the five things. And from those five things, because the Nook only allows you three colors and because Kindle only allows you four colors, I have to designate which colors to what again this can change up per book for you but i tend to keep all of my annotating the same because i just it works better for me that way um so that's again ebook annotating um as far as biblical fiction so again i did not start out with this system so the system is a little extensive but that's because I do a lot more book reviews for publishers and for the purpose of sharing them with you guys. And I have a passion for reviewing books that I've grown with my system. So here is my system, okay? 
that is the system right there it's it's a lot i had, i don't even know how to see two four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve yeah twelve colors T twelve twelve colors guys twelve i started off with five i then bumped up to seven and somehow i'm now at twelve colors but it's okay it's okay it, it's all right so um red for me for any book that i read um for any book that i read a lot of the colors are the same but i still like to keep them on separate color coding systems so for me red is always going to be character stuff so anything that's about the character's name character's age what they look like what they do um their family members and things like that anything character related is red i mark it in red um anything orange plot point if it's essential to the story if i think it's key to the story and what's going to happen it gets marked in orange foreshadowing i do in a navy dark blue anything that is scripture based so if they are using scripture in the biblical fiction or christian fiction genre i use purple purple for me symbolizes prayer it symbolizes christ god the trinity so i use purple that's it i a lot of these colors sometimes might not make sense but in my head they correlate so that's why they work that way um green is for quotes so any quotes that i like within the book um i marked in green pink is used to be for just romances but now i use pink for anything relational so whether it's a mom and daughter relationship parent relationship marriage um a romance anything relational whether it's friendship platonic whatever it gets marked in pink if i like it and it's a scene and it's cute it's pink um anything that is yellow is funny or happy moment so if it makes me laugh if i you know feel happy about it yellow anything that is marked in so this is where things start to change up a little bit no it doesn't change up i just didn't write it so blue excuse me <laughs> is anything that makes me sad or angry so if it makes me angry pisses me off makes me sad makes me cry it gets marked in blue because blue for me is sadness um prayer so i do mark prayers in my books because i notice that a lot of biblical fiction has prayers that i really really like and prayers that i want to personally incorporate into my life so i mark those in coral um anything that i have a personal connection with that i feel relates to me on a personal level i mark in this like teal turquoisey color i don't really know what color it is but it's like a light light blue color um i use gray for definitions and words that i want to define or like when i'm reading biblical fiction they normally speak in hebrew they will also give the english definition of it so like i'll mark those in gray so that i know that's something i need to understand um and then for biblical fiction anything i mark with brown is a location so like if they're talking about beersheba or mount zion or whatever town village they are in i mark it in brown because i don't yeah we don't know so yeah um as far as christian fiction it's literally the same color system the only thing that changes is brown for biblical fiction is going to be miscellaneous so i don't mark locations in christian fiction because normally it's set in our world the only time i do is if it's a fantasy if it's a fantasy i um use like brown for location but yeah. biblical fiction and my christian fiction annotating is pretty much similar but i do write them down separately for the purpose of me and my brain that's pretty much it um for bible studies and nonfiction, so they are also pretty much the same except for one difference so uh bible studies and uh non-fiction i use blue light blue for anything that's scripture related so if there's a scripture being used or referenced i mark it you guys know when it comes to my non-fictions i needed to have scripture if you are writing a christian non-fiction that has no scripture where is god in your book that's just me personally i feel like if i'm reading a christian non-fiction and it's a self-help i don't just want your opinion I want you to give me scripture and what scripture means and when i flip through a book and i see a lot of light blue i know that they are referencing and um they were seeking god in that now i'm not saying that other authors who don't have a lot of scripture were not seeking god but i know for me and where my mindset used to be and how i am now i know that for me i need you to give me more scripture than anything i don't want your personal opinion your personal opinion is fine your experience is fine but give me some scripture back it up with the word of god that's just me um personal opinion personal reasons for that um that's again because of where i came from the dark space that i was in those years ago 
reading those non-fictions did nothing for me because they really didn't have scripture scripture is what helped me so if i'm reading a christian non-fiction give me the scripture that's just me but um anything scripture related i mark in light blue prayer points um anything that i want to pray any prayers that they share in the book i mark in purple definitions are going to be in green so anything that i'm marking green are words that i want to define key points orange just orange um anything that i feel like is important to know but it's not like a key point i mark it in yellow personal reflection i mark in pink so if there's something that the author or in the bible study it's relatable to me personally in my walk in my season i mark it in pink because it relates to me um application is anything that tells me <clears throat> like what i should do so how to live how to apply it to my life i mark it in mint green um questions i mark in gray i just i like when they ask questions because it makes me think so i mark questions in gray because these are questions that i really want to go back to over and over again um when it comes to the color red i do miscellaneous um so red is miscellaneous so if there's like references to quotes or other authors or other people actors i mark it in red um for bible study now for quotes and references in my non-fiction i use a different green color you guys will see what i mean in a close-up because yeah yeah it's a lot i know again check the blog post down below to see actual images of my color coded system because it sounds like a lot it is a lot but i've gotten used to it because i've used it for so long so now i'm going to dive into the q a and share with you guys the books so the first question was what annotating was which i did answer it's basically when you are writing down your thoughts your notes definitions your feelings um connecting to the story you're interacting with your text you're to the text you're talking back to the text um so that's what annotating is the next question I have is, do you annotate every book? No. There are some books that I just know there's no point of me annotating. There's just, there's no point. But um, I tend to try to annotate every book because I still have to write a review about it. So yes and no, if that makes sense. And I'll explain. There's going to be a part two because there's another question about that. So um, the question is, have you ever regretted annotating a book? And I have this book here i didn't care for it too much i i mean i enjoyed it i gave four stars but i just didn't care enough to uh miso andrews amid the ashes now don't get me wrong i love miso andrews writing her last three novels um isaiah's daughter a fire and lions and isaiah's legacy both all three of five star reads this for me was like a four 3.5 can't really remember i annotated and then stopped gave up regretted it I don't care for this story enough to annotate it and I've, I've come to learn that I don't have to annotate every book but I do for the purpose of my reviews but I regretted annotating this so yeah um the next question is do you ever feel overwhelmed by annotating no um I don't feel overwhelmed just because I'm so used to annotating and it's second nature for me to annotate a book because I feel like I'm talking with the author about my thoughts about what they wrote so it's second nature for me so i don't ever feel overwhelmed um annotating a book and if i ever do i just don't annotate <laughs> so not really i don't think i've ever felt that way so no um do you ever stop midway yes again i showed you guys with this book i stopped midway because i didn't even care i didn't care so yeah that's the thing um does it slow does annotating slow your reading down yes um yes and no i would say yes for a typical person because it can <laughs> it's hard to explain so um the reason why i'm saying yes is because it forces you to actually slow down and pay attention to each word each thing that's being said each thing that's being done which i think is great because a lot of the times we read books so quickly or we try to fly through a book and we really don't retain anything so it does slow it down in that aspect but as far as like my reading aspect, no, I've loved books since I was a kid. I have always learned to read books at a certain pace, especially since I was on the debate team. We had to like give speeches in like two minutes. We had to get our thoughts together in like five minutes. So reading quickly is not 
a hard thing for me so it doesn't slow my reading down but it slows it down enough for me to actually really pay attention to each thing that's being said and done in the story hopefully that makes sense <laughs> um does it help more to annotate or take you out of the story it definitely helps me a lot more to annotate i don't feel that it's ever taken me out of a story um and if it does take me out of a story then it's not the point it's not me annotating it's just me and my mindset at that time so no um what do you write when you annotate so i literally write whatever i feel like writing um if i feel like someone pissed me off i will literally put he's stupid he pissed me off if i feel like i love a character i will put like little hearts and say oh my god i love omg like i write whatever i feel like writing um the best thing i can think of is with pearl and sand um i literally would annotate i was writing down so there was a part on page 10 where it says she couldn't bear the thought of his despair and i literally wrote she was a daddy's girl that's what i wrote um then there was a point where it says i've made a decision if i find no sign of a crop today i'm giving up and then i wrote down some scriptures i wrote galatians 6 and 9 i wrote mark 10 and 27 and then i wrote second chronicles 15 and 7 don't know why but i did again i wrote down my notes on um the different gods and goddesses if they're included um there was a part where oh, oh i forgot this part crushes me i shouldn't be reading this but i'm gonna read it it says um you're too old for hand holding she flushed and hid her hand in the folds of her robe. Her steps slowed and she fell behind, walking alone in the wake of the men. So I put not much of an affectionate father. He should have been kinder at least. So I literally write whatever I feel like writing, whatever thought comes to mind when I'm reading the book. Um, I also write down summaries of what took place. Um, so yeah. Problem with Sand is literally like the one book I can really show you guys because I have reread this book like three times. So yeah i can't wait till the 10th anniversary edition comes because then i can reread it again and make new annotations of course but yeah um the next question is have you ever made an error in annotating yes um again like i said most of my color coding system is the same but i change up two specific colors so where's that other annotating system so for my fantasy books so that's because that's really like the only one i can think of to share with you guys so for fantasy and my regular like secular books i have a specific annotating system for fantasies because it's a lot more of a denser read versus contemporaries and things like that the one thing i always confuse is green and blue because for my fantasy novels green is anything world building and purple is for quotes whereas for my regular non-fantasy books green is for quotes and purple is for things that i love so i can sometimes pick up a fantasy novel and mark stuff in green and be like wait no this is not a quote this is for world building or i can pick up a contemporary and start marking things in purple and forget that i'm supposed to be using green so those green and um purple are like the two colors i tend to mix up a lot because those are the two colors that switches depending um on the book style that i'm reading so yes um i have made blunders where i've like underlined and my underline has went left side when reading in the car so i've made mistakes and errors and i don't mind it at all it's my book it makes me mad at the moment but i just get past it so yeah um do you share your annotated books yes or no i share them with my mom because she's my mom but um as far as like other people no i don't have anybody to share them with so I mean, when I do move and I am able to have, like, an office with a full complete library, then yes, I will share my books with other people. Now, there will be certain books that I'm not going to share because, like, certain biblical fictions, like, Pearl in the Sand is personal for me. There's another biblical fiction, um, I think it's In the Shadow of, oh, I can't think of the name of the book. Hold on, let me look. It's In the Shadow of the King. That's a personal book. And then um, the Lion and the Butterfly series. Or the Butterfly and the Lion series. Um, are very personal because they deal with rape. They deal with sexual abuse. Um, and those are personal experiences for me that not a lot of people know about. So depending on the person, I wouldn't let them read those books. Because they're annotated. And I relate to them on a personal level. And I'm sure my notes are a lot more personal. But um, outside of those kind of books, yeah. I, I t take a book and read it read my thoughts tell me your thoughts let's have a conversation okay i'm thinking about starting something 
on YouTube um, with you ladies where I like buy a book, like a biblical fiction book, and I pass it around. Like I'll read it and then mail it to somebody, they'll read it. But while we're all reading it, we'll all like annotate. Probably not on the page of the book, but probably like on sticky notes. I'm thinking about, because I think it would be interesting just to see like how your thoughts align with another person's and you can have like an active conversation about it i think that'll be a cool thing i don't know i'm thinking about doing it just whatever i don't know but um yeah i should have annotated books my mom is like i said she's currently reading she's been reading this book now for like five six months i need this book back on my shelf but um yeah this book i let my mom i'm letting her read it and she's enjoying it so far so yeah um when rereading do you annotate again and does annotations bother you um, when I'm rereading book, annotations do not bother me because they're my personal thoughts of how I felt at that time. Um, one thing I wish I did do was write down, like, my start dates, but I do have Goodreads, so Goodreads tells me, like, when I start and finish a book, so that doesn't bother me. Um, but I do re-annotate when I'm rereading a book. Yes, I've done it several times. Um, let me see. So, the only two books I can really show you guys right now are these two. Pearl and Sand, of course, like I said, I read it 30,000 times, and then A Light on the Hill. Um, so, I have reread this book several times. I've read, I've known two times, I think I've reread this book two times. And yeah, I've gone back and, you know, highlighted new things, new points. I've annotated over again. Um, I don't mind, re, you know, re-annotating. And the same thing with this, like, this is my baby. Like, I will forever... The first time I read this book, I didn't have, like, the sticky notes at the end of each chapter. And then when I reread it, I started adding the sticky notes. And then when I reread it again, I started adding a new tab. So, yeah. I re-annotate, and annotations don't bother me at all. At all. Like, not at all. Um, Do you tap everything you annotate? I used to. I used to. But I learned that that's a little excessive, and not everything that I underline or mark up needs to be tabbed. I only tab things that are essential so again a good book to show you guys this is too many tabs okay too many um and i don't tab like this anymore because like the tabs are too far out and because it's paperback it does become a problem so my tabs i do put further in now and it looks a little neater but with this book i annotated the heck out of this book but i don't have a tab for every annotation i only tab I tap everything scripture related because I want to make sure that I'm understanding that this is scripture based heavy. So when you see purples, just know it's scripture heavy. Um, but I don't tap everything because everything doesn't need to tap. So, no. Is there a difference in how you annotate fiction and nonfiction? Yes, I did share that with you guys. But um, with my fiction novels, I'm reading for enjoyment. So I'm marking like things that make me happy, things that make me sad, things that I love, favorite quotes. With my nonfiction, I do annotate um, for the purpose of being able to retain and understand key things, key points, prayer points, um, really reflecting and making it personal for me. So there is a difference. Um, do you annotate ebooks? If so, how? I did talk about that. So um, yeah, so I'm just going to share with you guys some books um, that I've annotated. Okay, guys, so here is Pearl on the Sand by Miss Tessa Afshar. This is the original cover. I'm saying that because, like I said, that 10th anniversary is coming out, and she is gorgeous. But, um, yeah, so. I'm not going to show all of my annotations, just some. So, this was the author's note, so I was, like, underlining important things, writing down scriptures. So again, I was writing my thoughts here. I was writing scriptures. I wrote down some things here. More writing. There's like no set in stone thing that I write. I just write my thoughts. So at the end of each chapter, I was writing down some summaries just for review purposes. Every tab does not have something written. This one I wrote something, of course. Green is for quotes put purpose here so like this orange underline does not have a tab because it wasn't like essential essential but I felt like it was important so you know that is just this book here so that is pearl in the sand 
Next, we're going to look at A Light on the Hill by Miss Connie Lynn Cassette. I don't know why my camera looks like it's not focusing, but yeah, we're going to get it together. We're going to get it together. So, again, I've read this book multiple times. So, I was writing down what the different gods were. I was, <laughs> You see all the notes on this page. And honestly, these notes didn't come until I think the second time that I started annotating because that's when I had... Um, new colors and I was really like underlining and read the characters names so I put he's a perv because he was um I put this because this correlates to another one of her books so I wrote the character's name and I mean again see so here it says Tanar um so I didn't have I wasn't using gray at the time I was just uh, like circling the words so like I literally would just circle the the words um to but again you see I have some things marked So here I didn't know what to to use so I just put rude and just use the pen because I didn't have any color for it but there's no tab it's just it was a rude scene that happened um so yeah i'm just you know you don't have to always tab everything and always underline everything i think i have an underline on one of these pages here can't find it now but yep this is that like, I have a tab here, but nothing was underlined. I think I just enjoyed the entire page. So, yeah. That is a light on the hill. Then we're going to go into Mark of the Raven. This is a Christian fantasy YA, or actually new adult fantasy. Um, and, oh, I love this trilogy so much. Oh, my love. My love for it. So, can we just admire the map that is? So, Marking characters' names with red. Blue, of course, made me... I think this made me angry. It wasn't even that it made me sad. It just pissed me off. Um, this was key points, of course. I wrote a note, but why? Um, didn't mark it, though, with any colors. Here, I wrote something long-winded. <laughs> um, brown, I believe, was locations. I don't use tabs for that, though. Blue, everything just makes me sad with blue and angry. Green is for quotes. Purple is, I believe, for scripture. No, purple is not scripture. See, this is where things get confusing because I don't remember what color coding system I use, but this was not a scripture, I don't think. So. Again, every time I write, there is not a tab or an underline. And every time I underline, there's not a tab. I underlined here in orange. There's no orange tab. There's a blue tab here. So, notes. Like I said, your notes don't have to be over the top. Again, I wrote something. There's no color for it, though. So, yes, she would. <laughs> so cold. Like, I literally just write down my reactions. <laughs> I put savage. <laughs> You guys listen this does not have to be some articulate writing or whatever i put what because i was literally like screaming like oh my god like don't be bothered oh don't be bitter <laughs> ah this has to do with lady celine's mother her mother was so bitter see when i'm looking back at these like these uh annotations i laugh because i remember how i felt which is why i annotate but um, yeah, that's Mark of the Raven. I'm not going to get too, into all of that. But this is a new adult Christian fantasy. Beautiful, beautifully written. It does include magic and the elements. Um, but it does it in such a beautiful way that you know who's God and who is the enemy. So, yeah. Um, then we're going to get into historical fiction, of course. Redeeming love. We we love redeeming love. Redeeming love is just, it's amazing. Um, this one was a lot more personal for me. But, um... Yeah, I, I put bastard. I did because they they made me mad. Made me so her father really, really made me mad. Um, so I literally was like writing 
in this book because my feelings I said shaking my head I don't suck um because there was something that was said I think yeah Cleo oh her babysitter pissed me off with a, there was a scene that took place and I was just like I wanted to fight so um again I was using stickers you know you can use whatever you want in your books it does not have to be a specific way I this is when I really ventured out and had fun because I have so many of these like asian inspired diary stickers and they're called diary stickers but they're basically stickers they use in their like planners and stuff like that i have so many of them that i don't really use them a lot in journaling and i figured why not use them in my book so i was and again everything i i underlined does not have a tab there is no blue tab or orange tab but you see an orange underline and a blue underline so again this was the, the one that i read to you guys where it was personal Purple, of course, is scripture related, so there was quite a few scriptures, not a lot, but. But that is Francie Roberts. So now we're going to move on to nonfiction. So the one I'm currently still been reading for like the past year and a half. I feel like I've been reading this since, you know, like a year. Whatever, we're not going to talk about it. But, um. The Emotionally Healthy Leader. I do think I have some personal thoughts in here. Okay, whatever. It's okay. This is a book on leadership. Um, but um, I wrote... So I didn't feel like I had enough space to write the definition in the margin. So I wrote it on a sticky note. So I can still like read. In this book, I was using... Um, only four colors i think yeah and i was using like the large arrow so like everything that i tab doesn't like an arrow of course gray is for anything that's a question orange are for like those key important things that i want to understand and i wrote on the side i didn't like this pen if it's oh no i think i had got this book wet yeah i think this was one of the books that had got wet by accident which is why it's bleeding sometimes you know a line is going to have more than one color so I underlined it in yellow and then marked it in um, mint because this is something that I have to do permission to feel difficult emotions such as anger and sadness this is something that I need to understand that I need to give myself permission to feel these things it's okay to feel these things but yeah pay again the ink spillage no mind I had spilled juice so yeah this was a definition Again, more definitions. I'm writing, I'm underlining, and highlighting. I did not look up that. I need to actually look that up. <laughs> Just annotating my life away. Only putting tabs where I think it's in the same shoe. Um, this was something that we had to do. That's like questionnaires. I'm not going to show you guys my, my thoughts on that, but yeah. Pink was anything that's personal, so I used the pink tab for that. So, like, I, I get in-depth with my um, non-fictions. I don't not get in-depth. I think this is another questionnaire that was going on, and this is something else. Blue tab I use for things that I need to, like, remember to do. And then at the top, I have green tabs. If you guys can see, I have the green tabs at the top for the little questionnaires that they ask throughout the book. Um, and what I mean is throughout the book in each chapter, there's, like, a questionnaire that you do. Um, so I, after I answer them, I mark them in green so that I remember. Um, I'm currently on chapter, I'm currently on this page. I never did this because it was a lot harder to really do because this is talking about leading out of your marriage or leading out of your singleness. And this was literally like a slap in the face. So that's why I, I've been on pause with this book, but that's how I annotate. That, let's talk about this beauty. So C.S. Lewis. Okay, so... I'm really going to focus on the school tape letters, so that's like the one book I did read. I read another one in here, too. This was another book that I accidentally got wet, so... Yeah. I'm trying to find the daggone story. Oh, it was in the front. <laughs> so, I did read Mere Christianity. Um, and this was simple annotating. Just with colors. Nothing over the top. Just me annotating with colors. I don't think I did a lot of talking to the text in here. I 
I got food stains on my book right here. The Lord help me. But yeah, this, I didn't have a lot of like actual writing of my thoughts and notes in here. When it got to this section, I only just had the pens. I didn't go through with the colors, so I have to go back through, of course. This, I did put LOL here. But it's not always set in stone that I'm like in depth, in depth. Oh, I did have a note here. But screw tape letters now. We love the screw tape letters, okay? I adore the screw tape letters is literally like a blended non-fiction fiction novel it's it's funny it's crazy and i love it so like i was up in here writing notes upon this was a serious and you know it's a serious read when i get in depth in depth like this look 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 look, look, look. just just look just look okay I never finished with the rest of it, so I do have to, like, go back and finish. I was making sure that I marked everything, um, anything, anytime that he said enemy, he was really referring to God because this is written from the perspective of a, um, demon. So anytime enemy was referenced or him, I did mark it in purple so that I knew he was talking about God. And, um, anything that he said, our father I'm, I highlighted it in orange because I know that he's talking and referring to Satan. This is a very polarizing story. You have to go in this, into this with an open mind. Um, it is beautifully written now. But yeah, these are just, you know, my annotations on that. I need to actually go back to annotating this. Because your girl was getting real serious in this book, okay? Alright, we're gonna move along. This is one I actually recently finished. Um, this is Leadership Secrets of David. The King by Bob Yandian. And in here I was writing and just marking. There are no tabs in here because I didn't feel like it was necessary to have tabs. But I showed sure up was like speaking to the text. Okay. She was speaking to the text. Next we have Fervent. I think this is the one. This is when I initially started and had no. My son did that of course. But um. I literally had no idea what I was doing. I just knew I wanted to annotate and I wasn't heavy on like the full system. So I literally just had like a pretty sparkly gold pen and was like marking things. Literally just marking it. it if I go back to read this, I really don't know what I'm doing. Um, tabs, the paper tabs, I don't really care for because they bend a lot. So I honestly don't remember what any of this is. So I will be buying a second copy to uh, re annotate. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this was like when I first thought it had no idea what my annotating system was going to look like. And I just went for it. Okay, so the next book we have here is A Woman's Guide to Spiritual Warfare. For this, the tabs, I was correlating the tab colors to the cover. So I went with pink and purple. Um, purple was anything that was like a prayer that was in the book. And pink is anything I thought was essential. Um, so yeah, we, I did a review on this book. I'm not going to show you guys that because my mom did sign it. But this was a color coding system that I had learned from my sis Angela over at Sip Sisters and Pearls Click the Eye. Um, she will have an annotating system coming soon. But, um, this was her original system and I tweaked it. I think, I think I tweaked it, I'm not sure. But, um, I have since strayed away from this system. So, um, I use the colors, but her system I don't use as much. Um, but it was very helpful in reading this book. So, Again, green for definitions. These were questions. The ones in red I marked because they were like personal for me. Pink is personal with my thoughts in the red. I put a tab here. So, you know, your girls, I mean, I go in depth when I read my nonfictions because I want to grow spiritually and learn. So, sometimes I talk to the text, sometimes I don't. Sometimes something just doesn't have an uh, actual color, but just has underlining to it. It doesn't have to be over the top. And it grows. Your system will always grow the, the more you get used to it and the more you begin to read and figure out what you want to know and what you don't want to know. So that's that. Two more books to share with you guys. Um, This was a book. Okay, When God Ways makes no sense <laughs> by dr larry crab just the title alone cracks me up because this came at like a funny time in my life but um this i just did all yellow because i have no reason why i just chose yellow to match the cover i guess What's this? oh here's my highlighting system for that 
I guess. So I had a highlighting system. See, look at that. I had that in there. So, yeah. I was writing on sticky notes. Writing in the book. You know, it's it's my book. So when someone picks this up and chooses to read it, they will have my thoughts and what I think. So I enjoyed this book. It was a bit of a longer read for me. But um, as you can see, at the end of each chapter, I was using sticky notes to write down thoughts. I think, yeah, see? Oh, this I actually glued into the book. So, like, you can glue paper into your book if you want to. It's my book. It's not going anywhere. So, I did that. And I put my sticky notes on there because I didn't have enough space to stick them here. So, um... I had a lot more sticky notes for that. So... I never wrote my thoughts here, but I put a sticky note there because just put wow. <laughs> like I'm showing you guys, this is literally like I think what I yes. Yeah, I read through the rest of this, but I never wrote down the rest of my thoughts. So, so that was that. And the last book I'm going to show you guys is Pathways by Tony Evans. I enjoyed this. this. is actually a look at um the book of Esther. He has another one that talks about Joseph. I think. I think he does um and i definitely want to get that book because i did enjoy this and i know there is also a study guide to this that i want to grab um but this one i went with like purple tag. okay so i did a few things i uh sprayed edges of course rose gold because i thought it went with the bronze i don't know and then i used pink and purple because why not <laughs> um this was a book i literally wanted to give up on reading at first because i just as you can see, the first couple pages, it took me, how many pages? It took me six pages to really care. Um, and then it took me a little bit more to really get into it. But talking to the text again. So everything doesn't have to be over the top. Did I get this book wet? I think I did. Great. All my books seem to be getting wet. Um, so yeah. My annotations are how I feel and what I think at that time. So I'm going to flip the camera back around so we can end this massive video. Okay guys, so I was going to close out, but I just realized I didn't show you guys my Bible studies. So I'm going to show you guys three Bible studies. Um, the first one is going to be Battle Plan for Prayer. Um, I annotate the same way. So like the color system, you guys can see I did go through the color system but purples were prayers blue was for scripture um yellow was for like in important things orange is for key points um this is probably not the best book to, to use so you know but yeah i did use my system for that jonah is a good one that i could use so i use sticky notes for extra notes with need when need be um the green I used for it, when it was referencing other things or miscellaneous points. Um, pink was in here. Like, you guys can see the colors, okay? And the more recent one, The Way Home, that I'm still stuck in. <laughs> right. Um, I can show you guys. I didn't want to show you guys these close-up because I actually, like, have things written in here personal. But, um... Maybe you have some notes, green marks, um, some pinks, oranges, and yellow, some more mint here, some gray for the question. So I go in depth, but again, you don't have to do it the way I do it. You can start off really small. You can start off using pencil. You can use a notebook. You can use your phone, sticky notes. Use whatever works for you. I have done this for years. So like I said, I've grown from using pencil to using five colors to using seven colors. So now I'm using 12. Yeah. Um, it can get excessive at times. Some people think I'm crazy. But 
I know that when I pick up a book, I can open that book to whatever page. And once I see the color of it, I can correlate it to the color code system and know why I did it that way. Um, it works for me. As you can see with my nonfiction, I go I go in depth, okay? I write notes, I write thoughts because it's a nonfiction meant for my betterment and for my growth spiritually. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I apologize that this video is so long so long so the next video i do will be a reading vlog and um it'll be a reading vlog on hava right there i'm actually gonna have two reading vlogs one on hava and one on um the legend of shiva but the first one is gonna be on hava and when i start that reading vlog i will show you guys exactly how i annotate in that book for like the first two chapters maybe and i also will include a non-fiction because i am starting a new non-fiction book as well so i'll show you guys how i annotate in that and also i may throw in how i annotate my um bible studies as well so that'll be part two to this very very long winded video um but yeah hopefully this was helpful if you have any questions definitely let me know i'm here to help you answer questions you don't have to use my color coding system. If you want to use colors, you can correlate your colors to whatever is comfortable for you. For me, this is what works. It's very massive. I know. I know. But again, you do not have to start off big. You can start off small with just a pencil and some post-it notes. Just a pencil and some color tabs. You can start off with five colors. You can start off with seven. Whatever works for you, however it works for you. But I will do a video on how I annotate in my Bible because I know that's another thing people always ask me if I annotate my Bible. Um, my journaling Bibles, I don't annotate in. But my actual like study Bible, I annotate in because I feel like it's important. I didn't at first annotate in that Bible, but I used to always annotate in my original Bible. So a Bible annotation video is coming soon. But hopefully this explained why I annotate, how I annotate, and the different ways that I do for Bible studies, nonfiction, Christian fiction, and biblical fiction, um, as well as ebooks. But yeah, that is it for this video. Now I gotta clean all this mess up and um, go put it away. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.